Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Secret Place Pod with your host, Aaliyah Renee and the Holy Spirit. I am so grateful to be here and so grateful for all of you. Um, If you're at the gym or getting your groceries or on your commute or on your lunch, hello. I hope you're doing well. Um, This video's episode or podcast episode, we're going to be talking about... um, how god sees that you're trying and he is pleased with your effort um but before we get started with all of the things i'm gonna say a prayer i just want to like give this podcast episode to god um so bow your heads close your eyes let's say a little prayer thank you lord jesus so much for this podcast episode thank you so much for the listener that is here and ready to receive from your word lord jesus i pray that this would be an encouragement and a blessing to them Lord god that they would be able to learn that even in the small things and the small progressions that they do that you are pleased with them and that you love them and that you are honored to see oh lord god that your children are serving you in spirit and in truth oh lord jesus help us to be reminded that you do not care about religiosity um all you care about is that we love you and we serve you and we keep your commands beyond traditions or religious uh pretenses you care most about the heart of a man and how we serve you in that way and how we submit and surrender to you in that way so we love you lord we thank you i pray that this is an encouragement to someone um and i pray that someone would just get closer to you by the end of this podcast in jesus name we pray amen okay so hello everyone good morning you know where it says in like proverbs 31 where it's like she gets up before the sun like she's up we're up before the sun um so i'm a little like i have the most energy in the morning but i i'm also very like calm in the morning um i was on a two-day fast because i really wanted to hear from god and the lord has really been challenging a lot of the ways that i think and this is one of the things that i think really i needed to hear for myself um i'll start off by saying that coming off of like these past few weeks i was really using my own metrics on sort of determining whether or not I was serving God right or if I was like meeting his expectations granted wasn't asking him was just like "Mm, I feel like you're not doing enough and there'd be so many times where I would wake up I would do my devotions and like be there reading my bible for an hour and like trying to read as many scriptures as possible and catch up with my bible plan so I could read the bible in a year and what is that sorry there was like a a buzzer and i realize now more than ever what's most important is not my metrics but how god sees me and i felt like i had to do more like i felt like whatever i did wasn't enough for god like that he wasn't a hundred percent pleased with what i was doing yeah, I wasn't asking God, like, how I how he felt I was doing. I was kind of just, like, being like, okay, Aaliyah, you read your Bible once, but you should be reading it twice. And I would feel like such a heavy, like, burden. But it wasn't a godly burden. It was more so just, like, a you need to do more. And it was more anxiety-driven than it was driven by, like, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And I would just, like, wake up and be like, you need to do more. You're not doing enough um take this out do this do that do this do that and the the those things were always like so hard for me to do and i thought it was an, a reflection of like oh you're just not a strong enough christian blah, blah 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 but what i realized now stepping back is like a lot of the things that i was like god wants you to not do this was not even like god it was just me um or god wants you to read your bible in the morning and then at your lunch and then when you go home and if you don't do that you failed for the day and you're not a real christian like god doesn't talk like that he doesn't speak like that it was purely coming from myself but i still took it as like his words as face value even though i didn't seek after the word and say okay lord how much time do you want me to spend with you each day what makes the most sense in terms of like my schedule and and like still sacrifices needed to spend time with you but 
what exactly do you want? Not what, oh, Aaliyah thinks is the right amount of time because Aaliyah saw it on YouTube and this person does this and that person does that. So I need to match that energy. Um, And it's so crazy because in the spirit of comparison, when you look outside of your own walk, sometimes the thing that God is saying, well done, my good and faithful servant, like you've done well in this sacrifice, you've done well in this, you're being obedient to me. When we look at other people, sometimes we can think that what God says is just enough and just right for what I ask you to do and what I need you to do right now in the stage of your life. Because you look around at other people who are at different stages than you and you see their level of sacrifice or you see their level of commitment or you see the things that they're doing, you can think that what you're doing isn't enough. And that's when we start to try to do more. And that's when we're like, we lose the why of why we do things, where we don't do things just for the sake of doing, but we do things because this is what the Lord has asked us to do. And I think that's where I was, where, especially as someone who now I want to teach the word of God, um, I understand that I need to be plugged into his word. So I'm like, okay, pastors, I feel like pastors probably like read their Bible like five hours a day. So I need to read my Bible five hours a day. If I don't do this, then... I'm not going to get a word from the Lord and I'm not going to be able to post a podcast and this is what everyone's doing. But that is not my calling. My calling is not to be a pastor. My calling is to just create a community where we can talk about Jesus and where I can bring small teachings that will bless others and that have also blessed me. Like, And that's the thing. When you look at other people, your calling is so specific to you that your try, your why, your surrender is going to look drastically different from person to person because they're different people who God has called to do different things who are at different stages of their life journey. And I was talking to my mom about everything and I'm like, mom, I just feel like I'm not doing enough. I just want to please the Lord and I feel like I'm not doing enough. And the more I do, the less I hear from him. And she's like, I think you're starting to slip into this religious spirit, the spirit of like, it's a do, do, do thing. And you're doing so much that you're not actually stopping to hear from God. Like you're, you think that you reading your Bible and taking notes for hours and hours or watching these theological videos or like watching these preachings 24 seven is what God requires of you to see, to, for him to see you as righteous. But in reality, God really only asks for these two things to be the desire of our heart. The first is just to commune with God, so to spend time with him, true time with him. Reading the word of God can definitely be a way to spend time with God, but also just prayer. I realized that like I was going into my my prayer closet and I wasn't praying. I was going in, I was reading my Bible and I was leaving. I wasn't worshiping. I wasn't spending time with God. I was just going in there and seeing how many scriptures I could read. And then I would be like, okay, peace. Thank you, Jesus. Let me have a good day. Bye. I wasn't actually sitting there and saying to God, what do you want to speak to me? How do you want to guide me in the scriptures? Like we can get so caught up in daily devotionals that are pre-written and Bible plans that are like, read these five chapters a day where we miss out on actually hearing from the Lord. And I found that at the beginning of the year, before I started like trying to do all these metrics and before I was like, okay, you need to be real serious and read your Bible so you have a word. The word doesn't just come from reading the scriptures. The word comes from the inspiration that God gives you from the scriptures, the whispering of the Holy Spirit that only comes when you commune with him. And that's the part that I was missing. So like the more that I was like, I want this to be faith-based and bless people and like scripture, 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 I, I got further and further away from the true intent, which is to inspire people to just grow closer to the Lord. And I was growing further and further away from the Lord, doing more and more and more of these Christian things because I wasn't taking the time to spend time with him. And like I had mentioned before, there's really two parts to our relationship with God. The first is to commune with him. So meeting him in worship, prayer. Um, Sometimes like we don't pray. I wasn't praying to God, but I was just like sitting in my room reciting scriptures, which is great because we know scripture, scripture is important. Scripture is the word of God that is telling you about his heart. But in order to understand his true desire and heart for you, 
it takes prayer and communion and worship with him so that he can speak to you directly. And he can speak through the scripture sometimes, but nothing really beats like hearing God's voice. And then he can even direct you to a scripture specifically once you open yourself up to commune with him and to worship with him. And the second part of just being able to try, like your try being a pleasing try to the Lord, a try of progression and God saying, we care not about perfection, but more so progress and true project progress that has internal growth. He wants us to commune with him, but he also wants us to love him. And it says in John 14, 15, if you love me, you obey my commands. So of course, like when I say the try, um, especially as someone who may be like, if you're suffering with sin, he sees your try and a true try is that you love God so much that you intently every single day wake up and say, Lord, I want to please you by keeping your commandments. I want to show you that I love you by walking in step with your word. And the way that we do that is in every situation, in every temptation, in every opportunity we have, we show that we love God by trying our very best to follow his commandments. And sometimes we fall short because we are beings of flesh. I've spoken about this at length in many other podcasts um but even in that try even in the try where we're not perfect where we're not where we want to be james tells us that when we go through persecution when we go through trials and temptation we should rejoice in it because it's building us to be better christians it's building us to have a better try and god is pleased with those who try with a full effort and in their heart in the deepest core of their heart they just want to serve god It's not about like this glamorosity and it's not about your Bible streak, but it's about true communion with God. And that communion with God will push you to read your Bible in a more genuine way. So not a way like how I was doing it where it's like, okay, to-do list, wake up at 6 a.m., read the Bible for an hour, continue on with your day. And it challenged me like in this point where I felt like the most spiritually far from God was when I was spending the most time in my prayer closet, but I wasn't praying. And I wasn't worshiping him. And I wasn't just letting him and his presence just soak on me. And for those of you who maybe are the opposite, where you spend a lot of time praying and you spend a lot of time worshiping, but maybe the Bible reading aspect isn't there, but you still feel a closeness to God, he's pleased with that try. And at the root of it all, it's less about the things we do and it's more about our overall relationship with the Lord. And it's more about like, maybe because you work a nine to five and you're also a student, you can't feasibly read the Bible three to four to five hours a day. But when you spend that hour with the Lord, make that hour the best hour that you can do. Make it without distraction and really meet with him. It's less about that quantity, but more about quality. And we see this, the Lord actually reminded me of the story of the widow who gave two mites. I'm going to read it to you in Luke as well as in Mark. And this is now Jesus. Um, So Jesus is like in the temple and in the temple, they have a treasury where um, people give their offering. And in Luke 22, verse one to four, we see that there's a widow who goes up amongst everyone else. The Pharisees are giving their offerings, big, large amounts. And this widow, she gives two mites, which is like, the most minuscule amount to give. And look what Jesus says when he sees the widow give her two mites who gives her try, who tries. It says in Luke chapter 21, verse 1, he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he also saw a certain poor woman putting in two mites. So he said, truly, I say to you that this poor woman has put in more than all. For all these out of their abundance have put in their offerings for God, but she out of her poverty put in all the livelihood she had. In Mark 12, there's another recounting of this in verse 21, where it says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowds put in their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw their large amounts, but a poor woman came and put in two very small copper coins, not silver, not gold, like copper, worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all others have. They have given out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty puts in everything, all that she had to live on. 
And I think that's so amazing to see and something that was so valuable for me to hear because especially someone who has a busy schedule, I'm like, Lord, I want to give you more and I want to do more and I want to serve more and I want to tithe more and I want to do more. But in the beginning stages of truly setting your relationship on fire when you're a young adult or you're just a baby Christian starting off, it starts with the try. And this widow she tried she gave all that she could and that is what god is asking for in our relationship with him a true try a true heart that says lord i just want to come and serve you and worship you because a true pleasing life and sacrifice to god a true try to god that he's pleased with is seen is seen in psalms 51 verse 16 to 17 and god is speaking through David. David is inspired by God to write this psalm. And in verse 16, David says, Lord, you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, God, you will not despise. And a contrite heart is just a heart that feels remorse for sin and wants to do better and wants to serve the Lord. That's the definition of contrite, to feel remorse for something, to want to do better. And that's the definition of a try, just to more than the sacrifice of, oh, I'm sacrificing five hours a day to read my Bible. More than that is a contrite heart that comes to the Lord and says, Lord, this is all I have to give. I pray that you accept accept it. And those of you who are in your secret places praying and those of you who who give all that you can in terms of time and an effort and who have lived a life contrary to God, but now are walking with God with a contrite heart of remorse and are just trying each day to serve and please him, know that you are seen and God sees that as acceptable and he's pleased with you. And I think that's so important to remember, like, we don't do this for ourselves. And when I was like, what scripture should I read? How should I do this? How should I do that? I need to do more. Like, that wasn't unto God. That was for Aaliyah to feel satisfied in what Aaliyah was doing. When God is satisfied in the most purest of forms where we truly give all that we have to him. And like, sometimes our all is more than just like the actions because we think oh my gosh i'm doing so much i'm going to church every sunday i'm going to bible study i'm doing this i'm doing that but you're not giving the all of your heart you're not surrendering all of the deepest inner parts of your heart for a true relationship with him yet you distract yourself with the outward appearances but that widow she gives all she gives all that she has she's vulnerable she goes to a place a, a, a temple in the open and she gives all that she can and that takes a lot out of us. And sometimes we can like do these religious acts because it makes us appear godly, but it's not true godliness. You know, we can we can we can be like, oh yeah, I serve and I do this, but you don't surrender. Like we serve, we read our Bibles, we don't surrender, we don't sit in communion with the Lord. And those times are probably the toughest times of true sacrifice where like it, sometimes it's harder for me to pray than it is for me to read my Bible. Because if I read my Bible, I'm engulfed in the histories of other people. Um, but when I pray, that is the time for me to talk to my God and say, Hey God, what do you want for me? Um, what do you want me to do? How can I improve? How can I be better? Or when I worship the Lord, it takes a vulnerability of me saying, Okay, I'm not going to think about myself at all in these moments. I'm just going to surrender my full and total attention to you. Those, to me, sometimes are more taxing than reading my Bible, which is why I tend to read my Bible more because it's like, oh, I'm doing the Christian thing, but where is the connection with God in that moment? Another thing is that we have to be so important to remember that it's always a saying like relationship over religion, relationship over religion. Um, And I think you see this most in the story of King Saul, who was the first king of Israel. He was appointed by God to be the first king of Israel. And the goal as king is like, okay, you're king, then your son is king, then your son's son, and then your son's sons and son's son. But what happens is Saul, out of moving out of a religious spirit and not really taking the time to listen and obey what the Lord had told him, 
moves in like, I need to do something. Lord, I need to do something to show that I'm holy so that you can help me out of this situation versus just listening to the command that God had told him in that secret place and that try that he told him to do. He tries to do more than that. And out of that more, out of that religious spirit, he falls out of the favor of the Lord. And we see this. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 8. So for context, Saul is in the middle of a war. And Saul has an advisor named Samuel. Samuel is like a godly prophet that was appointed to be like the main prophet of Israel. And also essentially like an extension of the voice of God to Saul, the king. So Samuel tells Saul in Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 10 that he's going to go ahead to Gilgal, which is where the war is happening. And Samuel says, I'm surely going to come down to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, but you must wait seven days until I come to you and tell you what you are to do. So he makes the command. Again, Samuel is like the extension of God. He tells him, this is your try. Okay, I'm pleased with your try. You're not a perfect king, but we're going to war. And this is what I need you to do in order to honor the Lord and keep walking. And there's many times where the Lord will tell us, listen, I just need you to spend more time in worship. Or I just need you to spend a little bit more time in prayer. Or I just need you to, when you read your word, ask for me to be there with you. Like, again, this communion with God, like doing actions outside of the presence of the Lord is like, who are we doing it for? So so Samuel was saying, wait for me to come to you. And then we can actually do these burnt offerings and these sacrifice and fellowship offerings in the presence of the Lord. So these aren't religious acts. These are relational acts now when the Lord is there and communing with us. When, we, when we're doing things and the Lord isn't there, it's like, who, who are you doing this for? This is a religious act. There's no relationship. God isn't dwelling with you. You're not having a conversation with the Lord and praying or worshiping or reading the word with the Holy Spirit. When you just go and open your Bible and try to read just to reach a time point, your heart already is not pure. So Samuel is saying to Saul, we're going to fellowship with the Lord together. This is what you need to do. However, if we go to those next verses, so I believe this is in 1 Samuel chapter 12, the war is happening. So Saul is in Gilgal and the war is happening and everyone around him, all of the, the people around him are so nervous. And Saul was waiting for Samuel because Samuel said, wait for me and I will come and we will sacrifice burnt offerings. But Samuel's like, not there. He's not coming. So Saul goes, listen, give me the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings. We gonna do it ourselves because I need to do something. We're losing the war. My men don't have faith in me. I'm in this situation and I don't know what to do. I'm feeling far from God and I just need help. So I'm just going to take it into my own hands. I'm not going to wait for the presence of God. I'm not going to wait for his prophet that has been anointed for me. I'm just going to go and do it myself and we're going to figure it out. And that's that. So as soon as Saul burns the offering and he finishes making the offering, Samuel comes just as promised. And Samuel says to Saul in in verse 11 of chapter 12, what have you done? And Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering and we were losing the war and you weren't coming on the seventh day, I was waiting. And now the Philistines are coming, that opposing army are coming from Gilgal and I needed to seek the Lord's favor. I needed to do something in order to please God. So I, I just did this offering. I didn't think about asking for the presence of God to come, but I just knew like, oh, offerings are good because God likes offerings. So I'm just going to give an offering. Despite not understanding that without the presence of God, the offering was done in vain. And even worse, it was done in disobedience. And you can see this in verse 13. Samuel says, you have done a foolish thing. You have not kept the commandment the Lord your God gave you. If you had, you would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart, appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. You have moved out of relationship and into religiosity when you decide to do things on your own outside of God's presence and outside of the motivation of God which is why 
I want to affirm you in the try that you have. Because if your try to the Lord, if you're trying and your progress to the Lord is sincere and it's steeped in his presence and his relationship, there's never a moment where he would not be pleased with that. The moment where your try becomes unacceptable to the lord is a moment when you do it on your own when you're like listen i know that the lord is pleased with this but let me also try to do this and this and this and this and this and then we lose peace because we're we're no longer relying on god saying this is enough i'm pleased with you we can chill here for a little bit and then take you to that next level but right now i just need to see you consistently just pray to me and worship and stay in my presence but when we're like okay i'm praying and worshiping this is going well i've been doing this for like three days let's add it on bible reading and maybe i should do this and maybe i should do that and maybe i should start this and maybe i should do that and then we feel so engulfed with these things that we're doing and we're like lord look at all these good things that i'm doing in your name and he's like my presence wasn't there That's not what I had asked you to do. You walked down a path and a calling that wasn't even designed for you because you didn't seek out my presence in all things. And in all things in your try, the Lord is most pleased when he's involved in it. Like when we try to do things just for the sake of doing them and not actually because the Lord has asked us to or the Lord is with us and communing with us, we're so disconnected to God at that point. And that's where I was. I was literally doing all this reading and doing this and like trying to make the podcast and I'm like crying because I'm like, Lord, I just don't feel you like how I used to feel you. But you're not praying. You're not going back to a sincere try. You're just doing things to do things. Your heart isn't that heart of Lord. I just want to seek after you and everything else will follow, which is where Saul found himself to be. And as you can see, Saul's consequence for putting religion and acts over true relationship and true effort and true, and true trying to the Lord, he loses the kingdom. So his son will no longer be king. His legacy is not a kingdom legacy. Instead, it's the legacy of a man who, who failed to be after God's own heart. And instead, God chooses David as his king and he looked at his heart. So a couple chapters later, once Saul loses the favor of the Lord, a new king is chosen. And look how the new king is chosen, not based on his works, not based on his his stature, not based on the way that he looked. But it says here in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance. His appearance is being like who the next king will be. Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as a man sees. A man looks on the outward appearances. He looks on how much you're doing. He looks on how much you read your Bible, your Bible app streak, how many times you're going to services, how many ministries you're serving in. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. He looks on a sincere servant. He looks on a sincere surrendered heart and a sincere try. And the crazy thing is about David compared to Saul, they were both messy. David was killing people to go sleep with their wives. Like he was not a perfect man. Saul was also a messy man. But what made David different from Saul was that he tried. He never got impatient to a point where he ever did something that God didn't ask him to do. David's prayer was, in all that I do, as I live this life, Lord, don't take your presence from me. And again, the two parts to having a true relationship with God is to commune with him and be in his presence. And also it is to obey him and love him and keep his commands. So when one faltered where sometimes David did not keep the commands of God, he still would say, Lord, please don't take your presence from me. And he would repent to the Lord with a true heart and a true try, which is why God sees even despite our stumbling in our sins, if we have a sincere heart to say, Lord, I'm sorry, just stay with me. The truest desire of God's heart is just to commune with his people. He brought Jesus down and Jesus died. He became sin so that we can dwell and commune with him. Once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, all he ever wanted from the garden was communion. He wanted us to be close to him. He wanted us to just try. And I think that's the beautiful thing about God. And sometimes we can get like Saul. We can look around and we can see other services or we can see our circumstances and we're like, I'm not doing enough. And we want to be compelled to take our faith into our own hands and out of the hands of God and the sight of God. And that's when we step out of the reliance of God. And instead we step into our own works 
that are driving our relationship with God. But Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 10 reminds us that it's not about our works, but it's more so about the fact of relationship. Again, like I'm saying about this try that we're the handiwork of God, we're still being developed, but in order to be developed, we must stay in his presence. It says in verse 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is a gift from God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And if God is the potter, right? If, he, if we're his handiwork, we're the clay, as it says in Romans 9, we have to stay close to him so that we can be developed. So I just want to encourage someone, when you're walking in this faith walk, Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. God sees you trying. God sees your sincere heart. God sees that you wish to commune with him and love him and keep his commands. And though you may stumble left and right, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. There's a get back up. And when you're sincerely focused more on relationship than religious actions or checking off to-do lists or fulfilling timers or trying to beat the buzzer of reading scriptures, but you're more so saying, Lord, even if I have five minutes with you, I'm going to try. I'm going to give you my all, and I wish to stay with you in your presence. He is well pleased with you. And if that's what you're doing, don't be tempted to feel like you're not doing enough and that you need to do more. Whenever you feel like you need to do more or you're not doing enough, before you start adding things on, ask the Lord again, Lord, do I need to increase my try? Do I need to increase my effort? What do you want me to do? And wait to hear him. Don't be like Samuel who, or don't be like Saul who doesn't wait on the word of the Lord, but just tries to take things into their own hands and work under compulsion and under the flesh. Be very intentional when you add something to, you know, your prayer routine or add an extra hour on to worship and prayer. Is this what God wants you to do or are you just doing it to do it? Because David was the type of man that said, if it's if your presence isn't with me, I'm not going to do it. If your presence is with me, I'm not going to go. So if you say, I only want you to spend an hour with me, because anything past that hour, you get distracted, you get into your flesh, you're not really taking in the word, you're not really worshiping me. So I just want that hour, that pure hour, that pure try. Anything more than that is not pleasing to me. If you don't listen to God in that way and you say, but the metrics and what do you mean you only want me to read my Bible one hour? But I could read two. But that second hour, you're not going to receive every anything because you're all distracted and caught up. But God knows that first hour is the purest hour for you that you need to get done. And I think that's what the Lord taught me. Like, And it was crazy because I'm like, okay, maybe I don't need to read my Bible every single waking moment. Like, And like, ah, isn't that scary to say? Like, In an ideal world, Yes, you read your Bible a bunch. You read it like all of the time. But I think the Lord had to work with me because I was so, I was idolizing like, I read my Bible today. And if I didn't read my Bible in the morning, I'm like, oh, am I going to like, is something bad going to happen to me? I literally thought like, because I wasn't following these strict regimens that I had set for myself, not what the Lord had set for me. I was like, you're going to have the worst day ever. You're going to get in a car crash. Something bad is going to happen because you read your Bible, but you didn't read your Bible fully. And like you only worshiped for such and such amount of time. And because these thoughts of anxiety and worry came in, it wasn't a true moment that I could spend with God because I was so caught up in like, okay, did we reach our time? Like, God, are you pleased? Like the more we get in our head, the further and further we get away from God. And I think that's what needs to be remembered here. When we try, we try to just be with him. We try to stay with him in the most sincere way. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're not doing it for Instagram or to one-up someone else. And when we have a sincere try, that is when he's most pleased with us. So again, if you're trying, God sees you. If you stumble, but you get up, you're still a righteous person. And he loves you. So yeah.